Hello everyone, as you probably know, keyframing is the backbone of digital animation where you usually specify the start and the end states and then you let the software interpolate what's in between. The aim of this video is to share some keyframing basics and tips in Blender. I enabled screencast keys so you can see my keystrokes on the bottom left of the screen. So first things first, and I'm probably not teaching you anything new here, to add a keyframe you can either uh, select the object and then right click on the attribute you want to keyframe and then insert a keyframe. Another way is to hover your mouse over the object or attribute you want to keyframe and then press I. And then you can select uh, yeah, location, rotation, scale, whatever. An important thing to note is that when you're in, on a keyframe, the color of the attribute is going to be highlighted in yellow. And when it's green, it means that it's interpolated by the software. So that way it's an easy uh, visual indicator to know when you're in a, on a keyframe or not. Another important thing is that when you duplicate a keyframe, you have these uh, w yellow orange streaks. That means that the attribute did not change values in between these two keyframes. Let's talk about keyframing in local space. For example, I want to rotate this football around its local Z axis. So logically I would add a keyframe and then go to the end, rotate it around the local Z axis, add another keyframe. If we see what happens, you notice that the ball does not, the football does not rotate around its local axis. Blender is not aware of your local constraints because you only, the information Blender has is the start point and the end point. So when you rotate an object, uh, around a local axis and you said the keyframe blender does not have that information so it cannot interpolate the movement uh, correctly i hope that's clear how do we fix this we have a very um, handy constraint in blender called copy rotation we need to add um, an empty let's say a plane axis i will move it so that it's, hold on, I'm going to activate overlay so that you see. But it's at the same spot as my uh, football. We can move it here, it doesn't matter. The target for our copy rotation uh, constraint is going to be the empty, of course. And then here you notice that the football changed its rotation to match, uh, to have the same lo uh, axis, rotation axes as the empty. That's why we need to change... Uh, the owner here to local space so we want to keep the target as world space but the football which is the owner is going to have uh, its axes the same so that's why we set it at local space and here we can choose uh, which axes do we want to uh, apply the constraint to so for instance if we disable x and y you can see here if we rotate this uh, empty around the x-axis for instance it doesn't affect the football whereas if we enable it and then do that again it does affect the football um, so since what what's important for us here is only the z-axis you can just keep the z-axis or have them all enabled it doesn't matter in this case so what we do as you might have guessed is to keyframe the rotation of the empty and it will force the movement of the football so we select the empty rotation and then rotate around the z-axis i rotation and now if we look at the animation you can see it it's it's constrained to the z-axis let's say you have a collection of keyframes that maybe you want to squeeze or inversely you want to expand so that the animation lasts longer a good way to do that and a usually faster way is to use a scale so with your cursor on the timeline, you can press S to scale. But the problem with scaling is that we need an origin point. Uh, in this case, the origin point is going to be the where you pr place your timeline cursor. So be very aware where you place it because it's going to be the origin of your scaling operation, as you can see. You can access different interpolation presets by pressing T in the timeline. You will be using this tree 80% of the time. Sometimes I also also use uh, dynamic effects, mainly back and uh, elastic. 
uh, the thing to note is that you can have a different interpolation presets between different keyframes. So for instance, between these two keyframes, I want it to be constant. But then between these two, I want it to be uh, busier. So we'll see that since it's constant here, the football is going to teleport to uh, when it reaches frame 30. And then for the rest of the frames, it will be a, a busier uh, movement. Sometimes the default interpolation presets are not enough and uh, you want to have finer control over your keyframes. This is where the graph editor comes in. If you want to have all your keyframes visible, uh, just as we do in the 3D viewport, you just press A to select all, and press dot and it will center the active keyframes in the screen. The graph editor is easy to understand. This axis is time. And this one here is whatever attribute you're keyframing, when, which in our case here is uh, X location. So if we take the slope at this point, um, in our previous example it was, uh, it was a constant interpolation mode, so the slope is uh, the velocity or speed. In this case it's uh, going to infinity, that's why we see our object teleporting. On the other hand, if, for example, we set all of our keyframes to Bezier, so I'll press A to select all and then T, Bezier. Here, for example, we can control the rotation of this uh, Bezier handle. So let's move it likewise. And then here, if we measure the slope, it's close to zero. That's why our object will accelerate and then stop. The speed is literally going to be zero and then accelerate again. So we'll have a halting movement in the middle. By the way, it is also possible to add keyframes uh, in the graph editor by having your cursor on the uh, frame you want to add a, a keyframe in and then pressing I again. Then here you can select uh, which one uh, you want to add. In my case, I just want to add another one in the X location, so I'll press, uh, I'll click on only selected channels. Now we have another keyframe. I mentioned this briefly in one of my previous videos about animation tips. It is possible to keyframe uh, object visibility. We cannot keyframe uh, the hide object button, but we can uh, toggle the disable in viewports button and this one is uh, keyframeable. Uh, you need to make sure to always keyframe both uh, in the viewport and uh, in the render. Otherwise, uh, when you render your animation, it's not going to look the same. So let's say we want to move our football here. 35 GX will move it up to here. And then add another keyframe. And uh, what you do is... Uh, so before your football disappears, we can, for instance, add frame 10 as well. We can keyframe this. So I'll, I'll put my cursor on the uh, button and then press I. Same for view for render. And then I'll go to frame 35, disable both, and then keyframe. So now if we see our ball will will move to frame 30 and then disappear. We have two uh, issues with this method. The first one is that once you are past the frame where your object disappears, in this case 35, you will lose uh, your frames which means they will not be visible. So, for example, if you have uh, other properties here, and then you want to check that property in frame, I don't know, 50, you will, you will not be able to see it. So, um, I would say a workaround is to, disable, is to disable the viewport while you work on your keyframe. So here I'm in frame 50 and I can work on other properties or attributes. But uh, yeah, this is a little bit annoying. The second thing is you always have two properties of so viewport and render. You have to keep them synchronized. These are the two main issues uh, with this method. A dumb solution is uh, instead of using viewport visibility, you will be using uh, the. Hold on, let me move it. I think it was 35. Uh, we will be using the location keyframing. So we will just move by one frame uh, where we want our object to disappear and then we can just 
move it out of the frame of the camera. So in my case, I can move. You can move it up or down. I'll move it down, and then press I in that keyframe the location. But you need to make sure that the interpolation is set to constant. So as we saw before, our object will teleport in between these two keyframes, but it, it will be the equivalent of uh, disappearing. So if we try the animation, we can see. But the good thing here is that we still have our object enabled. So whatever properties we have here, even past our uh, disappearing frame, we can still control the properties as we want. When I get out of my uh, camera view, you can see that our object is obviously still in the scene. So this is uh, very handy. One last tip related to something that frustrates people a lot. Uh, which happens when you keyframe an attribute in a node. So for example, let's add a cube, scale it down, move it towards my football. Yeah. The X. Let's add a material. So at frame 5, I'll keyframe it on white, and then at frame, I don't know, 30, will become red. Okay, so you notice here that the color obviously changes, right? I can toggle my overlays. But you can see that I have my object selected, but still I cannot see in my summary the property I just keyframed. Uh, this confuses a lot of people, but the trick is you, you need to have both selected, the object and the node that's uh, th that has the keyframed attribute. So you can notice that when we click on the node, you have the attribute. That's it for this video. I hope you learned at least one thing from these uh, different tips. And uh, I also wish you good luck in your uh, Blender learning. Have a great day.